Having failed to get my ZX81 Caverns.p program to work on the Spectrum Next emulator, my next move was to see if I could migrate the ZAT I'd written to run as a next.nex file. There are a few reasons for porting Caverns to the next. Firstly, because I suspected that if I recreated it as a ZX81 game, I would run out of memory in 16K due to adding the intro screens. I did want to see it running on a Sinclair computer though, and as I backed the second release of the Next, this seemed like a good candidate. It would give me a project to work on with the Next. I didn't know how far I'd get with it as I don't have a lot of spare time, but it would be fun to have something to work on long term through the manky English winters. I didn't have a Spectrum so I knew nothing about it, so I started by reading the original manual and seeing how the display was written to. The display is split into two blocks in the Spectrum's memory. One for the high-res pixels and the other for attributes that define the colours flashing in intensity. The next has alternative ways of displaying high-res, but I thought I'd start with the original Spectrum layout. First I wrote a small next basic program to write to these blocks. I found the addresses for the blocks and used two four next loops to poke to the blocks. This ran very slow at 3.5 MHz and even when I ran it at the top speed for the next, it seems likely next basic wouldn't be fast enough to run caverns. Poking to the block sequentially in memory, the display was being updated in a non-sequential way down the screen. Also, the colours were updated in an odd way. I was discovering the quirks of the Spectrum display and why its graphics had had such a distinct look and why the colour clash issue had been a problem with many games. For my caverns game, if I kept it to look like the ZX81 original, I would only need it to be in black and white and wouldn't need to touch the colour attributes. They could be set to ink black and paper white for the whole display. I didn't need flashing or different intensities, so I needed to focus on displaying the ZX81 graphics as pixels. I looked at the Spectrum character set and this was different to the ZX81s. The Spectrum had lowercase letters as well as capitals, and the arrangement of characters in the character set was different. I looked into the ZX81 character definition in the ZX81 ROM, I was able to get the pixel definitions for the 64 characters it uses. It inverts these for the other 64 printable characters. To display the screens from the 32 by 24 binary files that define them in ZX81 characters, I would need to read the values from the binary files, look at the characters in the ZX81 pixel definitions from the ZX81 ROM, which I now have as a binary file, and then translate these to display on the Spectrum's high res screen. First though, I would need to set up an assembler environment. I followed the specnext.dev tutorial on how to set up the environment using the SJS ASM Plus assembler. I created a project with its .asm assembly example, a make file which ran the assembler, then called a put file to add the .nex file to the cspec image file so I could run it on the emulator. In the bin folder, I had HDF monkey to write the NEX file to the image. I put .bat file which called this and the sjasm plus .exe assembler. When the make.bat file was run, it created caverns.nex and caverns.map in the bin file. I used an example assembly file which creates a green border around the screen. Green is color four, I changed this to color three. I didn't know what color this would show. Running the .nex file in the cspec emulator gave the following results with a lilac border. My dev environment was set up and I was ready to go.